Rock Monster Genocide presents Wings Over West Virginia. Welcome back to Wings Over West Virginia. In today's episode, we will be looking at the origin of the Mothman. Ever since the Mothman was first sighted, people have tried to come up with explanations for what the witnesses have seen. They suggest that instead of Mothman being a legendary creature, it is a simple, real-world animal being misidentified. The eyewitnesses disagree, and it has yet to be proven nor disproven what they've actually seen. Wildlife biologist Dr. Robert L. Smith at West Virginia University told reporters that descriptions and sightings all fit the Sandhill Crane. A large American crane stands on average 5 feet tall and has a 7 foot wingspan, featuring circles of reddish coloring around the eyes. The Sandhill Crane's call could be an explanation for the eerie and monstrous noise sometimes heard by witnesses. The bird may have wandered off of its migration route. There are no official sightings of such bird in West Virginia, although there have been many unconfirmed reports in the past. On November 19, 1966, a reporter named Rolf Turner printed an article in the Herald Dispatch newspaper about his interview with Dr. Robert L. Smith. The article was called, That Mothman, Would You Believe a Sandhill Crane? Mason County Sheriff George Johnson also commented that he believed the sightings were due to an unusually large heron. Skeptic Joe Nichols says that a number of hoaxes followed the publicity generated by the original reports, such as a group of construction workers who tied flashlights to helium balloons. Nichols attributes the Mothman reports to pranks, misidentified planes, and sightings of barn owls and albino owl. He suggests that the Mothman's glowing eyes were actually red eye effects caused from the reflection of light from flashlights or other bright light sources. But the area still lies outside of the owl's unusual range. In 2002, we published an article about this on the March issue of the Skeptical Inquirer. Witnesses reject the idea of the creature being a sandhill crane. The bird is known for its long neck, a feature the Mothman does not have. The crane's proportions are also off. The Mothman is usually reported as 7 feet tall, or at least as tall as a man, with a much larger wingspan. Neither the Sandhill Crane or the Barred Owl can fly at the speeds of over 100 miles per hour like the Mothman did in the Scarberry and Mallet sighting. Various college professors tried to say that it was a, a stork or something dumb like that. And uh, uh, some people said it was a giant owl. Well, I've, I've seen large owls, but I've never seen an owl that, as big as a man. I just wish Dr. Smith could see the thing, said eyewitness Mary Mallet. Witnesses were shown photos of the Sandhill Crane and other birds, including even a pterodactyl during the investigations in West Virginia. Eyewitness Tom Urey had this to say. Wrong color, too skinny. Now, I've seen pictures of Sandhill Cranes on TV and uh, no. In my opinion, uh, Professor Smith from uh, West Virginia University was 100% wrong. Some people will even believe the Mothman is an alien or perhaps a mutation caused by the pollution of the TNT area. Chief Cornstalk was born in 1720 and became a prominent leader of the Shawnee Nation just prior to the American Revolution. In the fall of 1777, Cornstalk made a diplomatic visit to Fort Randolph, an American front at present-day Point Pleasant, West Virginia. He was seeking, as always, to maintain his faction's neutrality. Cornstalk was detained by the fort commander, who had decided on his own initiative to take hostage any Shawnee who fell into his hands. On November 10th, when an American militiaman from the fort was killed by nearby and unknown Indians, angry soldiers brutally executed Cornstalk, his son, and two other Shawnee. American political and military leaders were alarmed by the murder of Cornstalk. They believed he was one of the only hopes of securing the Shawnee's neutrality. At the insistence of Patrick Henry, then governor of Virginia, Cornstalk's killers, whom Henry called vile assassins, were eventually brought to trial, but since their fellow soldiers would not testify against them, they were all acquitted. In 1840, Cornstalk's grave was rediscovered and his remains were moved to the Mason County Courthouse grounds. In 1954, the courthouse was torn down and he was reburied in Point Pleasant. A local legend claims that he took his revenge in the 60s by sending the mysterious Mothman to terrorize Point Pleasant. Legends arose about his dying curse being the cause of the misfortunes in the area. Lore has it the Cornstalk spoke saying, I came to the fort as your friend and you murdered me. You have murdered by my side my young son. For this, may the curse of the Great Spirit rest upon this land. May it be blighted by nature. May it be even blighted by its hopes. May the strength of its people be paralyzed with the stain of our blood. 
This event was later supplanted by local Mothman stories, though no contemporary historical source mentions any such utterance by Cornstalk. In the book titled Monsters of West Virginia, published in 2012, it is said that the curse was recently debunked as fiction for an outdoor play written in the early 20th century presented in Point Pleasant. The book goes on to say, a man taken by surprise and shot multiple times at point blank range and who was not killed instantly probably would not be able to muster much consciousness for anything in his final moments, let alone the dramatic pronouncement. Some still believe that the fictional play could have been based on an already existing oral storytelling or even a true event. The Thunderbird is a legendary mythological large bird-like creature in the history and culture of the indigenous people of North America. The Native Americans consider it a supernatural bird of power and strength, and it is often carved as the top of a totem pole. The Thunderbird's name is said to originate from the belief that the beating of its enormous wings caused thunder and stirred the winds. The Mothman is often compared to the Thunderbirds because they are both large flying creatures that are sighted in America. They compare the Mothman's red glowing eyes to how the Thunderbird can shoot lightning from its eyes. Some view this as an interesting example of how different cultures could come up with similar concepts. Others take this to mean that they are the same creature. Another contributing factor in the comparisons is that the original Mothman sightings took place in Point Pleasant, a town that is already known for its urban legends of a Native American curse. The connection has been made that Chief Cornstalk could have summoned a Thunderbird, which would be Mothman. Yet another fascinating origin for West Virginia's Mothman. And now for some sightings. Police in the city of Charleston, West Virginia, received an excited phone call from Richard West at 10.15 p.m., Monday, November 21st, 1966. Patrolman D.L. Tucker handled the call. West insisted that a Batman was sitting on his roof next to his home. It looks like a man, about six feet tall, and has a wingspan of six or eight feet. It has great big red eyes, West reported. The policeman asked the witness if the creature flew, to which he responded, straight up, just like a helicopter. In St. Albans, West Virginia, just outside of Charleston, Miss Ruther Foster claimed that Mothman appeared on her front lawn on the evening of November 26, 1967. It was standing on the lawn beside the porch, she told reporters. It was tall, with big red eyes that popped out of its face. My husband is six feet one, and this bird looked about the same height, or a little shorter, maybe. She continued, it had a funny little face. It didn't have any beak. All I saw were those big red eyes. I screamed and ran to the house. My brother-in-law went out to look, but it was gone. <laughs> Miss Connie Carpenter, a shy, studioish girl of 18 from New Haven, West Virginia, had an encounter with the creature at 10.30 a.m., Sunday, November 27th, 1966. She was driving home from church when she saw what she thought at first was a large man in gray standing on the deserted links of the Mason County Golf Course on Route 62. Ten foot wings suddenly unfolded. The thing took off straight up and headed for her car. Those eyes, they were very red and once they fixed on me I couldn't take my eyes off them, she declared. It's a wonder I didn't have a wreck. She said the creature flew directly at her windshield, then veered off and disappeared. Connie stepped on the gas and raced home in hysteria. She was so upset that she was unable to go to school for several days and required medical attention. She was one of the Mothman witnesses to suffer from an eye burn ailment. Her eyes were red, swollen, and itchy for two weeks afterwards. Miss Carpenter was one of the few to get a close look at the Mothman's face. It was horrible, like something out of a science fiction movie. These next few sightings happened decades after the original Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. On August of 2009, in Sacramento, California, photographer Lamont Greer was taking pictures of a local bridge when he spotted the creature. Lamont peered through the darkness and saw a shadowy figure on top of the bridge. It's such an eerie feeling to see something like right out of a horror movie. Lamont told about his sighting, saying, I had just finished filming the backside of the bridge, so I was bent down putting my camera back into my camera bag, and I just kind of felt something looking at me. He further explained, saying, When I first saw it, I didn't know what it was. Then my eyes focused on it better, and I said, You know, there's something up there. It spread its wings and then started to fly off, and that's when I could see the extension of its body. Greer tried to photograph the strange creature, but it was too fast. It disappeared over his head, leaving him terrified and shaken. He described the creature by saying, It wasn't a man. It wasn't a bird. It was something that was absolutely strange and something unique. I mean, if it wanted to come down and really hurt someone or attack, it could definitely cause damage. My friend Brandon once told me a story about his encounter with the Mothman, which he claimed to be completely true. 
I took interest in it and wrote it down immediately, asking him questions and quoting him directly. This is my secondhand account of what he saw. Brandon lived in West Virginia. One night in 2008, there was a power outage in his small community. He was getting hot in his house with no air conditioning, but it was raining, so he decided to go outside to the dark to cool off. While standing on his porch, he saw the glow of two red eyes staring at him on the bottom of a nearby hill. The wooded hill was just beyond the town's creek that separated the woods from his small backyard. He grabbed an axe that was laying on his porch and threw the axe at the creature. It made a shriek and ran off, he told me. I asked Brandon if it was maybe some sort of owl or something, but he said it stood too tall and it had the big glowing red eyes. With the fact that it was nighttime, raining, and a distance away, it's very possible for him to have mistaken what he saw. But Brandon was confident in his sightings and said, When he was standing on the hill, I saw the lightning strike. It lit him up and I could see his moth wings. The next day, he was in an ATV accident when he was riding his four-wheeler down a hill. His brakes went out and he smashed into his dad's ATV that was parked at the bottom. Brandon suspected that the Mothman either did something to his brakes or served as a warning. Brandon has since moved from the location where he saw the creature, and whether you believe him or not, Brandon is one of the many West Virginia citizens who can say, I've seen the Mothman. What do you think the true origin of the Mothman is? Is he a mutation, a thunderbird, a Native American curse, a known animal, or a mass hallucination? Whatever the case, until next time, West Virginia, keep watching the skies.